Hi everyone, so I was going to make pizza today and I am going to make pizza today, but it's March and it is spitting out snow. We got a call last night that at about 12.30, 12.45 that our horse down the road was giving birth and um, the lady who's watching her and had been waiting for this for a couple weeks now called Bodie and said, if you wanna be there for it, you better come down because it's his horse and so he rushed down and um, he got to see the new baby colt um, right after he didn't make it for the birth but he got there right after and so our little pizza dinner that i had planned is actually going to be kind of a birthday dinner for us because now we're celebrating a new little colt and um, i will show you guys some videos and i am so excited to do this pizza recipe i know there are people who have been waiting for a pizza recipe. And I originally wasn't planning on sharing this one, but this one has been turning out really well for me. And so, um, and I've had a lot of the whole wheat flour. And so if you use whole wheat flour, um, this is a really great recipe to go to. As always, you can find the recipe as well as all sorts of other einkorn flour recipes on the blog hilltop in the valley and um, I started this recipe in the morning you can also start this recipe the night before you just don't want to leave it out longer than about oh 12 hours or so um, if you're going to be if you're going to have to leave it out that long then I would put it into the fridge cover it and put it in the fridge and then take it out a couple hours before you're going to do the last rise um, after you roll the crust out. That way it can warm up again before you roll the crust. Anyways, so this morning I got started on it. We went ahead and um, I got the kids breakfast. We showed them pictures of the new colt. They didn't know last night until they woke up this morning and we announced it and we were able to show them some videos. We'll go down probably tomorrow morning to see the colt, but today we get to see pictures and we get to do a little happy birthday party tonight with our pizza. So that'll be fun. I put together the dough right after breakfast, or I should say during breakfast, because I wanted it to get done early to have time to rise. And um, it really simply, you don't have to do kneading on this dough before you are getting ready to roll it out. Um, this one, I basically put all of the ingredients into it. I let it sit for about 15 minutes just to make sure that those whole grains are absorbing all the moisture that they can. Because with einkorn especially, it takes a longer time for the grains to absorb the moisture. So if you're used to modern wheat, modern wheat will absorb it really quickly and you can see what you've got. With this heirloom wheat, you have to wait a little bit longer. It's not going to absorb it quite as fast. So you don't actually know what your texture, how much moisture it's going to have in it until you wait. Um, so go back after about 15 minutes. And after that 15 minutes is up, I went ahead and I kind of, um, I, I don't know how to explain it. I just kind of put it back into a ball a little bit. I wasn't kneading it. Uh, there was some flour that hadn't been completely mixed in. I wanted to make sure that it was actually thick enough to be into a ball. I want to make sure it wasn't too thin, too thick, that sort of thing. So basically what it was, it could hold itself in a ball and it was a little bit sticky. And then I went ahead and I wet the towel that we put over it. And um, with the damp towel, I put that over it once more and then I put it aside to rise for about eight hours or so. Um, so today I made this about 8 a.m., which means that I will take it out to roll it out about 4 p.m. So before that time, I am needing some ingredients. So next, we're gonna be going to the store and I will pick up the, um, oh, it is really snowing out there. So next on my list is to be going to the store and picking up the toppings for these pizzas. Today I'm hoping to find some basil and hoping to find 
some um, like little balls of mozzarella. And on one of the pizzas, I want to do uh, pesto, pesto topping with mozzarella cheese on top. On the other pizza, it will be a little bit more traditional, but we'll see what I find. Hey guys. Okay, so I'm on my way back home. I went to the grocery store and I went ahead and I got several things for toppings. I got, um, I, I like to shop at, it's kind of like a Benton Dent store. It's a Mennonite run grocery store and they get a lot of items that um, maybe companies have made too much of or um, they just haven't sold them and they're maybe they're nearing their um, expiration date and so you can get really good deals on them so this one happens to have a great variety of cheeses and so i love to go see what cheeses they have and so today i got got these mozzarella balls um and i will cut those up to put on the pizza i have oh i have a, a salami that i got i have this queso fresco and then I believe I got a Parmesan. I'm not even sure what this is. Not sure if you've ever seen anything like that before. <laughs> I went ahead and I got the tomatoes for the pizza with the pesto. And I could not find just plain basil where I went. And so I ended up getting um, one of these that is basically ground up herbs. Um, let's see, they put it with oil. So, I mean, I would have rather just had basil and done it myself, but in some ways it's great because then I don't have to worry about doing it. And putting that pesto together, I got some more cheese. Um, so it's great finding these deals. And if you guys happen to have any like discount grocery stores in the area, I really recommend trying them out because I do not grocery shop a lot. I do like an Azur standard order once a month and it makes it so that when I go, I can actually go to these discount places because I have everything else already purchased. And so I know that when I go, I'm going to get a good deal. Anyway, so we have everything. Um, I got my to-dos done, DMV, bank, all that. It is just about four o'clock. So it's really about time to get started on getting our crust rolled out. So we're going to get back see if we can start rolling out crusts and hopefully it'll all work out with all the kids being around because I know they're going to start getting excited about having pizza. So let's head back. Okay, I'm home from the shopping trip and I am ready to make these crusts. After putting the groceries away, I divide the dough into three pieces. Now I have one pan that's bigger than the other two that I'm using, so one of the dough balls will be bigger. I fold the dough as I do with all of my einkorn breads. This helps with putting the air pockets into a bread that doesn't get as airy as our modern wheat. And double whammy, this is whole grain, if you remember. And so you definitely want to help this one get a little bit of extra rise in it. To begin rolling out the dough, I put a piece of parchment under the dough and then on top as well. After I've gotten the shape flattened to about half an inch, I like to stretch it a little bit more with my own hands. And then I sprinkle on some flour to prevent sticking and I roll it out some more. This pizza, you're gonna want to be thin, but we'll go over that in just a minute. Meanwhile, the oven has been preheating with my cast iron skillet, and no cast iron, no problem. You can use a pizza stone or a baking sheet. I must say though, I love how well the cast iron conducts heat and bakes the bottom crust like a brick oven. You want this dough to be rolled really thin, as I was saying. One of the biggest things I have learned with this pizza, okay, two things. The first is that you want it rolled really thin, about an eighth of an inch, just before it breaks open. I've had it break and I've had to press it together. And honestly, that's about the thickness you want it to be. So many times 
I've made it too thick. And instead of pizza, <laughs> instead of pizza crust, it turns out like a thick focaccia bread. And we are making pizza here, y'all. Roll it thin. Lesson number two is that I've learned not to spread it too wide. It's very easy for me, especially making this in a skillet, to think it needs to be bigger than it does. Um, don't put it past me to put take out the ruler at this point and measure it. And I think that is actually a good idea because um, honestly, this particular crust did just that. It was a little bit too big. Anyways, though, it's okay to tear off some of the edge if it's looking too big and take it off and then, you know, continue shaping it. I like to roll the edges over about a half an inch at the end for just a little bit of a thicker outer crust. Um, you don't have to do that, but even if you do, and if you're trying to roll it out a little bit extra to do that, it can still wind up too big. So just be careful about that. And honestly, if it does wind up too big and you're using a skillet as I am, it can still be squeezed into the skillet and turn out great. Um, you'll see that with this pizza that I'm making and nobody really noticed. <laughs> they just thought that's how it's supposed to be. All right, to move the rolled out pizza, we're going to flour the dough a bit and then we will fold it into thirds. You're going to turn it 90 degrees and then fold it over into thirds again. Cover the dough and now that we are done rolling it out, we're going to prepare our toppings as it has its second rise while the oven is heating. All right, after 30 minutes of heating up those skillets, I'm going to take one out and prepare it for the moment. Butter, please. And then we will add some cornmeal or coarse ground einkorn like I'm doing here. Uh, adding the coarse ground einkorn is a great way to use up any coarse flour you have left over. I happen to grind my own flour and um, one of the ways I clean my flour mill is to have some coarse ground flour go through it in the end. Of course, that leaves me with a ton of coarse flour that I have to figure out what to do with. And this is a really good idea for it. I have a video on other ideas for using up coarse ground flour if you want to watch that one. But cornmeal is just fine too. And then after this, you're going to drop your pizza crust in. Let's put the toppings on and then we will get this into the oven. Remember, you can get the complete recipe and even print it out at my blog, Hilltop in the Valley. Making a pizza is always exciting, but the best part has to be when you take it out of the oven and see the brown crust and bubbling cheese. Nothing quite like that. Let's not forget the celebration at hand though, our new colt. At one day old, we brought the family to meet our new addition and mama did really well with having so many visitors around. Okay, we're on our way to go see the new baby. It's just about one day old, one and a half days old and it's the kid's first time to see a baby horse. You guys excited? Yeah! <laughs> Where's Larkin? Stuck in here. Hi! Hey, Velvet! Mom, where's the baby? I did it. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hey, one person at that answer. Just to bring Anastasia in. Hi, Mom. Is that pretty cool? Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Is <laughs> Velvet okay with 
Aww. She's drinking milk right now. He's drinking milk right now. <laughs> That's where her milk is, up there. <laughs> Our mama horse has been sweet and very protective. I'm not sure if the kids realize that these few moments, these are just a once in a lifetime event. They will never again get to see this little guy at one day old. Of course, sometimes I forget that with my babies too. Enjoy the moments, y'all. Enjoy the moments. Thank you guys for coming along as we make our einkorn sourdough pizza today. And as we visit our newborn cult, it has been such a wonderful time this weekend for us, despite going through colds. <laughs> if you have not yet, please subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you along for our journey. Um, we put up videos on here for nurturing the home and nourishing the family, and we would love to have you be a part of it. We will see you again soon. Bye-bye.